They are the world's great railway stations. The biggest and the busiest. Standing still is not a good option. <laughs> You're going to get knocked down. And there's thousands of people. It's peak time, so there's literally thousands of people. Epic gateways to a city and beyond. As soon as they come into this space, I always hear people exclaim, oh my gosh, look at that. This stop, Calcutta's Howrah Terminal, the busiest station in India, with its staggering morning rush hour. <laughs> and where staff face a 24-7 struggle <laughs> to keep a million daily passengers on the move and a thousand daily trains on track. I'm supposed to one, two, five, zero, three number. Train is coming to platform number 12. It's a bustling morning at Howrah Station, Calcutta. It's the busiest terminal on India's 40,000 mile rail network. In the station control room today is operations manager Diana Bala. At Howrah Station, we deal with around a million commuters on a daily basis. The trains are crammed full. Some people are hanging out of it, some people are squeezing into it with children, old people, women. It's a very squeezy and squishy kind of situation in the trains. And they've gotten used to it. Calcutta is situated on the banks of the Ganges and was once the capital of the British Raj. Today it's the capital of West Bengal one of India's most populous states and the epicentre of one of the fastest growing urban areas on the planet. And it's Howrah Station, Calcutta's transport hub, that has to soak up the pressure. And while rush hours are the same the world over, <laughs> Howrah's is just that bit spicier. <laughs> Facing the crowds today is Chief Ticket Inspector Pranab Bhattacharji. After 30 years on the job, he can spot a ticket cheat just by looking at them. It is face. It is only face. So I only look the eyes of the passengers. Every, every, every criminal has the intention to look at the police. So. The passengers who looks at me, maybe we don't feel passenger. Out on track, Harrah's railway gangs are also up against it. Hey, it's going to go. It's going to go. Hey, hey, it's going to go. Four and a half thousand workers look after Harrah's track, and in charge of the team today is Mr. S. K. Sinner. Heavy work pressure, work load. No holiday, no rest. Uh, allotted is 24 hours into 365 days. A mile down the line at the Tikia Para coachyard, it's also non stop. Chief Yardmaster SK Mitra has to prep many of Howrah's 1,000 daily trains. But there's one service that has his attention more than most. That is Rajdhani Express. He leave, leave at 16 o'clock. So they have how many hours to do this? Six hours for per maintenance. The Rajdhani is Calcutta's overnight express train to the capital, Delhi. It needs to leave the depot at 4 p.m. if it's to make an on-time departure. So the pressure is on to get it looking spick and span. Okay, body 
From the control room, Diana is closely following the Rajdhani's cleaning schedule. Generally, a lot of VIPs and important politicians travel by this train. If we do have information that somebody very important has gone travelling, then we do give it a bit of special priority that day, but we give a lot of focus on Rajdhani anyways, every day of the year. Because it is a premium train, like I mentioned, and it is monitored on a regular basis by the railway board. So, it's a top priority train for us. On the concourse, the heightened security is a sign that today's Rajdhani will get even more attention than usual. It's scheduled to carry Calcutta's highest-ranking VIP, the most important political figure in the state, the governor of West Bengal. Making sure the train leaves on time is operations manager Raushan Kumar. One uh, important dignitary, the governor, honorable governor, is travelling by 12301. Havra New Delhi Rajdhani Express. We will take care that the train departs at right time and uh, runs uh, at what is scheduled time in my division. Back at the yard, the pressure is now on Mr. Mitra and his team to prep the train and get it to Harrah's platform on time. Hey, Pandika, are you here? What's up? As the deadline approaches, the last linen is loaded and the train is dispatched to Howrah. It pulls into Howrah's platform nine right on schedule. Once the governor is on board, it'll be down to Chief Controller Debajit Chakraborty to make sure it gets a clear run to Delhi. Rajdhani the top right, top right. The main train of our division, I mean, practically of our, not of our division of Indian Railway, the most prestigious train. On the concourse, there's a different sort of priority. Dada, kono bacha ei bhabe kabose thakle, amader ke inform korben chaile namra ha, bacha sisu sahayta kender theke achi. Every day, Celestin and Giotti patrol the station, checking on the welfare of Howrah's homeless railway children. <laughs> Calcutta is one of India's poorest cities. More than 40 children and their parents use the station to sleep and to beg. Asa! Asa! <laughs> The daily challenge is to get the kids to go to school. The parents want the children to, to be with them and ask for money from people so that parents may have money to buy food and eat, to live their life. So sometimes parents also they depend upon the children. Back on platform nine, it's now 10 minutes before the Rajdhani's departure and its compartments are filling up. The governor's arrival is now imminent. And his motorcade is right on schedule. It's minutes before departure and Governor Kashari Nath Tripathi climbs aboard the Rajdhani for an important meeting in Delhi. Now it's down to the staff to meet an on-time departure. And bang on schedule, the Rajdhani Express slowly pulls out from platform nine. The governor and his entire uh, staff with him have gone on the train and everything is perfectly fine. And we'll be mon monitoring it on the board right now and we'll see how it moves throughout the section. The train has begun its 17 hour journey to Delhi. But this is not the last they'll hear of the Rajdhani Express.
It's the start of evening rush hour at India's busiest station, Howrah Terminal in Calcutta. A million passengers pass through the station every day. And at the ticket office, all 80 counters are open for business. They are always in a hurry. I have to give the tickets as fast as possible. passenger dealing one type of art. Plus, I have to give the tickets as fast as possible. On the platforms, trains are leaving every few minutes as half a million commuters make their way home. <laughs> Many with journeys of several hours ahead of them. Even the women-only carriages are feeling the strain. But everyone does their bit to make it more comfortable. In Hara's control room, operations manager Diana Bala coordinates the station's tight rush hour timetable. We run around uh, A67 passenger trains, uh, 150 mail express trains on a daily basis, and around 200 uh, freight trains. So that's quite a lot. And its chief controller, Debajit Chakraborty, who's under the most pressure. This evening period is very busy, very busy. The one, one detention of one train that may cause the detention of other trains. So far, Russia has been running smoothly. But news is coming in about the luxury service to Delhi, the Rajdani Express. Signal failure. Signal failure. Signal failure. The Rajdani left Calcutta on time, but now it's come to a halt at Dan Cooney, a vital rail junction 11 miles from Howrah. Very, that is treating very seriously. And that is a very, very, very serious embarkation will arise from top level, from our topmost level. Although it's the signals that have gone, it could indicate a more serious problem with the track. Calling on Ocheto, permanent out a physical verification of the track. Uh, a track failure might mean it might be a rail fracture or something. It might be any reason. So we have to go and physically check so that we don't find any rail fracture or something. With the line blocked, trains are backing up behind the Rajdani. Diana and her team now face serious disruptions at the peak of Russia. <laughs> After Rajdhani Express, that may affect the other mail express also. That's why we are then and then we inform the signal control, uh, inform their staff to attend the failure. On the concourse, passengers are still arriving. They're oblivious to delays further down the line. <laughs> At the station's signal centre, they're battling to reroute trains in and out of Howrah's 23 platforms to minimise the disruption. It's been 20 minutes since the Rajdhani Express came to a halt outside Dankuni Junction. And every second of delay is crucial. But now there's good news. The train is on the move again. 
Diane has now got to worry about the knock-on effect of the Rajdhani's delay. Basically, we're supposed to have uh, three block sections ahead, or rather three stations ahead, which should have green signal for the Rajdhani. So this happened right ahead of Rajdhani. So you can imagine the impact. Services following the Rajdhani along the line have now also been affected. Uh, because of which Rasani was hit, two other trains have also been uh, affected. So we will hope that those two make up on the run. But then, let's see, we have a lot of other factors also deciding how a train moves. So we'll see. Until it uh, crosses a particular point, we will not know. As the Rajdhani heads towards Delhi, it's losing even more time. Almost the train is running at present is 24 minutes. 24 minutes and it can say that this train will loss. <coughs> Surely, uh, because the 24 minutes will not make up. That is make up. There is no make up time. That will be treated as serious case, as because it is Rajdhani Express. Yes, it's a bit unfortunate, but then it's a signal failure, it's an asset failure, and uh, although we keep our assets well maintained, there will be some chances, some incidences when something will lapse somewhere. So we try to minimize it as much as we can, but let's say it's an act of God. <laughs> It's now approaching 7 p.m. and there is no let-up at Howrah. Fourteen million people live in Calcutta's urban sprawl and many of them are still streaming across the Ganges heading for the station. The local commuter trains are full to bursting and now the long-distance services, including India's vitally important mail trains, are starting to ramp up. <laughs> On the platforms, Constable Rinku Nandi is doing her best to keep order. <laughs> Line <laughs> On platform eight, hundreds of passengers are waiting patiently for one of the most important services of the night, the Amritsar Mail, scheduled to leave at 7.10. But bad news is coming in at the inquiry desk. The Amritsar mail has not yet arrived, and its departure from Howrah has been put back by several hours. Amritsar mail, I have And the disruption is spreading to other services. The train is Amritsar mail, Amritsar mail, and there are two express. There are two express, two trains. Many people travel, they are very crowded trains. This is not normal. Today it is a bit busy. But it's not just the passengers who are affected by the delays. Howrah's mailmen now have to reorganize today's deliveries including all the posts scheduled for the delayed Amritsar mail. But getting the mail back to the sorting office during rush hour is easier said than done.
It's now ten past seven, and attention has turned to platform nine and the next most important train of the night. The famous Kalka Mail, one of the oldest services on the Indian network. The delay to the Amritsar Mail has meant that some passengers heading to the north of India are now trying to board the Kalka train. And Railway Police Constable Shiv Prakash Singh has to deal with the extra demand. In the control room, Diana is battling to get the train schedule back on track. But there's a limit to what she can do. You see, we have very limited line capacity and each train runs behind each train. So if the first train in a particular uh, block of trains run late, then it is very obvious that the trains running behind it will also get delayed. So uh, a loss in one train would mean a loss in five more trains. So we have to make sure that all trains run right time so that no other trains are hit. As more passengers arrive for the Kalka Mail, there's news about the impending arrival of another long-distance train. The Hum Safar Express, travelling to India's remote northeast, is running two hours late. It only leaves Hara once a week, so no one wants to miss it. Hum Safar Baro number, Hum Safar is the one two five zero three number. Train is coming to platform number twelve. Just just now it has confirmed platform number twelve. It's now eight p.m. and the delayed Hum Safar Express pulls in on platform twelve. It's halfway through its four-day journey, and staff are under pressure to get the service out. But passengers can't get on until those for Calcutta get off. The Hum Safar Express is finally on its way on its long journey to India's far northeast. But for those heading towards Amritsar, an important pilgrimage site for many Indians, there's still a long wait. <laughs> But as the clock ticks towards nine o'clock, and with delays still occurring out on the network, the fate of the Amritsar Mail remains uncertain. It's the end of the day in Calcutta, India's third largest city. While some wash off the day's cares, across the Ganges at Harrah Station, there's still a long night ahead. Hey! Hey! Mr. S.K. Sinner and his railway gang are back on track, carrying out vital repairs. They're replacing damaged rails on a double switch crossing on the approach to Harrah Station. It is unsafe for the traffic movement, so we both uh, jointly observed and inspected that uh, train not move safely yet. The switch crossing allows trains to move in and out of any of the station's 23 platforms. <laughs> And it's vital that it's ready for the morning rush. The new rails are lifted into position. Uh, 
टाइट कर दिया तो टाइट किया Now they need to check that the crossing mechanism is still working. Tang and stop rail will be fitted jointly with no gap. With no gap. When it is occur then we uh, can allow traffic. One minute, one minute. Kitna samay le andaaz kar. Hai kya ho raha hai? Idhar se bhagan. Woh chal raha hai. Acha ulto kar ulto chala. Ulto kar ke. Ha ha ulto chali rakho. The movable rail won't align correctly with the fixed rail, and time is running out. Gap. On platform eight, passengers for the Amritsar Mail have been waiting for four hours, but finally, it's good news. Shortly before 11 p.m., the Amritsar train rolls into Howrah. Passengers, goods, and the all-important mail bags are loaded on board for the 40-hour journey to the northwest of the country. What is it? Jaga hai, jaga hai. Out on the tracks, Mr. Sinner and his work gang are still struggling to get the rail crossing ready for morning rush hour. The moving rail should fit snugly against the fixed rail. Fortunately, Mr. Sinner's eagle eyes have spotted the cause of the problem. There's an issue with how the rail has been fixed in place. यही वाला बोल दूँगा कि ठेक रहा है वही वाला तब तुम बोला था कि नहीं ठेकेगा अभी उसी में ठेक रहा Finally, with an hour to go before the line must be reopened, their success. The gap has been closed. The lines are open again. Hey, hey, Hello. And not a moment too soon. I am uh, doing this to preserve, to maintain a smooth and safe traffic movement of passengers. M millions and millions of people are uh, moving on train, uh, and their life are uh, on uh, depend on me. It's the start of a new day at Howrah Terminal. <laughs> Keeping the station and its one million daily passengers, 1,200 train movements, and 23 platforms up and running is a constant challenge for the man in charge of the Howrah division. Multiple trains are being received and dispatched from Howrah station at a time. We have to make sure that the passengers don't collide into each other. The, the movement is free. There are no stampedes because any slight mishap, any change of the platforms, that can result in the catastrophe. So we have to really make sure the system flows smoothly. And I am really happy that my team of uh, people who handle these jobs are very, very efficient, very experienced, and they do this job day in and day out without any hiccup. Back on shift for the morning rush. Is railway police constable Rinku Nandi? हाँ अंदर करिए हाँ अंदर करिए मैडम जी हाँ अंदर करिए अंदर जाओ अंदर जाओ बेहतर जाओ हाँ अंदर से जी और ये हावड़ा स्टेशन में पोते के दिन दस लाख के बेशी लोग जो नेखंड के जाते हैं उन्हें जावा आशा करते थके जी राजा कौन 
মানে জেনারেল কম্পার্টমেন্টে ওঠে তখন তারা মানে জায়গা নিয়ে বসা নিয়ে একটা ঝামেলা ওদের মধ্যে চলতে থাকে তখন তারা প্রচুর পরিমাণে গন্ডগোল প্রচুর পরিমাণে ঝগড়াঝাটি এগুলো তো তাদের মধ্যে চলতেই থাকে It's just after 9 a.m. And Constable Nandy has been called to her first passenger incident of the morning. <laughs> Two commuters have been fighting over a seat on an incoming train. One man is saying the other attacked him. <laughs> But the accused says it wasn't him who started it. It's getting heated and Constable Nandy calls for backup. On the other side of the concourse, another incident is unfolding. At the first aid point, nurse Anjali Das is helping a young passenger who's struggling to breathe. The girl has a known heart condition and hasn't taken her pills. The patient's situation is going from bad to worse. With the swift arrival of the ambulance on the concourse, one stressful situation is resolved. But back at the police booth, it's getting even more heated. The arrival of armed officers was meant to restore some order. But now other passengers are joining in. Head Constable Rajibul Basha has been brought in to calm it all down, but now the accused wants to have his say. Officer Basha offers the accuser the chance to make a formal complaint, but that will involve lengthy paperwork, and the man is now having second thoughts. They lead the man towards the police station to start the formal process. But this is more than he'd bargained for. The man decides to withdraw his complaint, but even as they walk away, neither of the men will let it go. And this time, the police have just had enough. They are amicably settled. They are amicably settled. Away from the drama, operations manager Diana Bala is back in the control room. Tirish, we need. That's for me. Ito tata di kaya nata bolo because tomorrow I'm going to Tirish to the Chinese again. Okay, guys, ito bolo rakho. She needs to make sure the morning rush hour goes as smoothly as possible. Generally, I come in the morning and I take a bit of positions around just to know how the trains are moving and uh, 
what are the actions that needs to be planned for the day এখানে কেমন ট্রেন চলছে এখন তোমার আচ্ছা এখন আর কোনো ইস্যুস রয়েছে কোনো ফেলিয়ার বা কিছু চলছে আর বেসিক এইম ইজ টু কিপ দ্য হুইলস রোলিং বিকজ উই ক্যানট অ্যাফোর্ড টু হ্যাভ আ ট্রেন স্টপ আউট অফ কোর্স বিকজ দ্যাট উইল ওনলি ক্রিয়েট আ কেয়স ইট উইল কজ প্রবলেম উইথ দ্য প্যাসেঞ্জারস হু বিন ট্রাভেলিং ফর সো মেনি কিলোমিটার্স এন্ড ফর সো মেনি আওয়ার্স But with vital track maintenance scheduled for this morning, that's going to prove a major challenge. Mr. Sinner and his team are back on track just hours after finishing their night shift. With no possibility of stopping services, they only have a 15 minute window between trains to get the job done hey hello in day time due to density of traffic traffic department cannot allow a traffic block today they're doing maintenance on an important component the fish plate that holds the rails together this is fish plate They have just 15 minutes to take it apart, clean and grease it and put it back together. Oh, hoy gato, hoy gato, ei dikta karo, ei ei dikta karo. Ha, ha, ha. Ei sampal tokka. With the rail exposed, he can now carry out important checks. Yeah, I am observing if any crack found under under the bottom of the rail. If found, then we ready to change the rail. And changing the rail would mean stopping the traffic on this busy line during rush hour. No crack found there. All good. But Mr. Sinner's 15-minute window is nearly up. There's a train now waiting to get into its platform. Mara pel ke chhar ke maro. Mara pel ke maro. Inda. And the train won't wait any longer. It's 10 a.m. just after morning rush hour at Harrow Station, Calcutta. On the platform, Celestin and Giotti are back on their daily patrol, checking on Harrow's vulnerable homeless children. Brother, wait, ha. हम लोग train check करेंगे, ठीक है? एक बार ना. भूलेंगे लम्बे तो. सुन ना बाबू. ये लो. चल दे आया आया. आया उधर नहीं आया नहीं आया. And there's an even more disturbing reality here. बहुत बार यहाँ पर ना छोटे-छोटे बच्चों को छोड़ देते हैं, हाँ? ऊपर में. Children are regularly abandoned on trains arriving from the countryside, and Celestin and Giotti need to find them before they're put at even more risk. Back at the dedicated child welfare booth on the concourse, a young boy has just been found on an incoming train. He has nothing but a telephone number written on his arm. अगर तू बोलेगा ना क्या हुआ है हम लोग हेल्प कर सकते हैं तुमको घर लेके जाएंगे चिल्ड्रेन A different purpose to come uh, to come to this place. Out on the tracks outside the station, Mr. Sinner and his team have a 15-minute slot between trains to finish vital rail maintenance. 
And time has just run out. They've cut it close, but the team's work is done. The track has been made safe and no trains were delayed. In the control room, Diana and her team, alongside the rest of Haura's 28,000 strong workforce, have got through another rush hour. There's a lot of pride in this and there's a lot of fulfilment also because I, I personally here, I'm dealing with one million customers at Haura station. But if I look at the entire map of Haura division, we are dealing with more than five million people. And catering to their needs, ensuring their safety, that is my job. From train guards to nurses, engineers and train drivers, Haura's hard-working staff have kept the service up and running and its passengers safe in one of the most crowded and challenging environments in the world. They are, in the true sense, soldiers of India. And, uh, you know, I don't know, really, I don't know what motivates them. But once you are a railway man, that too, in, particularly in Indian railways, your life is devoted to the railways. They just work day in and day out. It's a, it's a tremendous job. They are the great railway stations of the world. The biggest, the busiest, the liveliest. Standing still is not a good option. <laughs> You're gonna get knocked down. There is a big uh, fight. For some, it's the gateway to the journey of a lifetime. For others, a one-way ticket to the daily frustrations of rail travel. This stop, it's Melbourne's Flinders Street, the busiest station in the Southern Hemisphere. There's thousands of people. It's peak time, so there's literally thousands of people. Where staff battle through an Aussie summer. Please be aware that due to a person being struck by a train, it's basically going to create a bit of mayhem. To keep the network up and running. Now I'm going to be stuck on a bloody bus. And passengers on the move. I just want to get home tonight. When do we want it? Now. Just when you think things are going smoothly, anything can happen. Melbourne, Australia's second largest and most populated city. Famous for being the most livable city in the world, it's an urban paradise of cultures, cafes, bars, music and world-class sporting events. At its centre and fixed in the heart of every Melbourneian, Flinders Street Station, the city's social and transport hub. This is what we call the dome area of Flinders Street <laughs> and everyone that comes to Melbourne basically meets underneath the clocks. They were over in the pub, they looked at the clocks and that's when they knew what time that they had to catch their train. Good morning and welcome to Flinders Street Station. This is your Eltham train running by the City Loop. Over 100,000 people and 1,500 trains pass through the station every day, making it the busiest station in Australia. Overseeing the service today is station controller Greg Lister. Busy, probably the best way to describe it. No two days are the same here. There's always something going on. Down on the platform, staff known as rovers help keep everyone moving. And that might be more challenging than usual. It's 9am on Monday morning and it's already hot. See that? It's 27.8 in Melbourne at the moment. It feels like 29.6, so yeah. I feel like they're really tired when it's hot. I feel like everyone's tired. Um, I almost feel like people have sympathy for us when they see us uh, working out in the heat. 
there's no driver to confirm, so we can put the signal back. Run off two. We can put the signal back, can we? That's definite. Definite, yep. Put, it, put that one down the local and we'll go off the three one two. At route control... Well, he's coming up 13 late. The, they're uh, getting the through a busy morning rush hour. Zone. This is the hub. Without a doubt, we're the ones that make all the operational decisions. If we, want, we need to recover a timetable, we'll, um, we'll make those decisions up here. Network controller David Matthews has an instant overview of the state of play across Melbourne's 15 lines and 600 miles of track. That's the full network. That's our wow board. Blue's good, red's your late running train. Never know when it's going to happen. That's the same as um, anything on the network, really. I mean, we, we react. So if everything's on time, we'll sit back and just monitor. But um, our job is to react to situations, and we've got to come up with a plan pretty quickly. Call it a 59 Riversdale on three, please. And they're going to have to react sooner than they expected. Hey, Jeff, urgent. Jeff, urgent. Stop all trains, Kensington. Oh, I'm going to go, mate. Hey Ed, David Metro, how you going? Hey, got trains stopped at Kensington. What's the two leads affected? A three one two. A three one two. Police have called network control with information that a man known to be at risk of suicide has been spotted at a local station. Got um, someone threatening self harm. Someone matching his description is now being tracked by staff on CCTV. Yeah, well, we're watching this guy at the moment, so okay. he's fully threatening for self-harm, yeah. I suppose, so. We think we're we not going to fall. All trains in the area have been stopped and police are on their way. Are well, the police are there? Yeah, now. Yeah. It's a delicate situation which has to be handled carefully. Yeah, transit 241, absolutely. Thank you. Transit. Right but it's good news. All clear, Jeff? Mm -hmm. Yep, all clear. Dave, all clear? All clear. All clear. It's a case of mistaken identity. It looked like him, but it wasn't him, so just be on the safe side of things. We've got to stop trains as per police request, so just um, letting everyone know. Yeah, Michael, Dave at Metro, all clear, so that 8316 will move. Out on the rest of the network, it's running smoothly. But down under, there are challenges found nowhere else. We do get kangaroos on the track, but they're lightning fast. They usually are good to get out of the way. And I was just driving along, and he hopped on, hopped over and hopped off, minding his own business, so there he goes. At Flinders Street Control, they're now setting up for the Monday afternoon rush hour. At this stage, touch wood, running fine, but this is the desk where you don't want anything to really go wrong. Because once it goes wrong, then everything collapses. And controller Greg Lister is not taking anything for granted. Just when you think things are going smoothly, anything can happen. Hey, Frank, how you doing? Oh, we want. He's suspended down there. Oh, oh. We got reports of a disabled train at Carnegie. It was due to a pantograph down. The pantograph on a commuter train has disconnected from the overhead cables. The busiest line on the network is now blocked at the worst possible time. We're dealing with crush-loaded trains coming out of the city, in the city loop during this time. So from a passenger point of view, we're getting 800, 1,000 people um, potentially could be getting off services. News of the disruption is filtering through to rush hour passengers at Flinders Street. How long the time will take to... How long, I, that I can't tell you. It is absolutely yeah. disgraceful. And it's on the same line where passengers have had to put up with several weeks of a bus replacement service. You OK, sir? Is that affecting the line? Oh, some uh, metro train has got its pantograph caught in the bloody overhead wires, so my train can't get through. Now I'm going to be stuck on a bloody bus, which we've been on buses since the 1st of December. So you can tell I'm a little annoyed. This week was going to be the first week back when they could have a train all the way from home to Flinders Street. 
And what are we, Monday night? Peak hour, and we're back to the buses, so. Can't do anything. I just got to suck it up. It's a hot Monday afternoon rush hour at the height of an Aussie summer. And at Melbourne's Flinders Street, Australia's busiest station, 50,000 commuters are trying to get home. Buses have been organised, yep. but they're not there yet. Yep. A train has lost power and is blocking the track on the busiest line on the network. If you imagine that there's a train broken down in front of you, your options are very limited uh, on what you can do to avoid that. If that train can't go anywhere, it's completely disabled. Um, we don't have a lot of options and that's going to cause significant delays. We just need to follow the guidance of our control tower metro uh, and make our best judgments and safe decisions that we can to what we've been trained to do. Have they organised the buses yet? Uh, looks like buses are being organised, but it could take a while for them to get there, I'm assuming, so... No. All staff, please be aware that we're currently expecting significant delays. Because at the moment it's long delays, so catch a tram if you like. The disruption has happened at the worst possible time. At the start of Monday evening peak, on the very day when trains were supposed to be running again after weeks of work on the track. Very, very welcome, like a hole in the head. Rush hour wise, what time now? 4.15. It's just starting to build now, but it's starting to get busy as you can see now. They just want to get home, they just want their train. They just want to get home tonight. And they don't particularly care as long as Metro run a train. When do we want it? Now. <laughs> but back at route control, the news is getting worse by the minute. Looks like we've got another issue. Yep. We've got the disabled train at Carnegie, yep. and then we've just got this image from infrastructure. It's not only the train's pantograph that's faulty. The incident has also damaged overhead cables. So I reckon we're going to lose the, lose the uh, local lines and the Caulfield group. Looks like the overheads been permanently damaged. So I reckon we're going to have bigger delays and we've got to advise passengers as to what's going on. Due to a fault on the line, there is no Pakenham or Cranbourne services running this evening. No train is leaving from this platform at all. They've suspended the, the Cranbourne Pakenham line because it's the most trains are stuck on that line. At Flinders Street Control, staff are doing their best to get people home on replacement buses. V-Line services have been replaced by road coaches departing from Southern Cross Station. Busy, probably the best way to describe it, but it's certainly the time certainly goes quickly. When it's like that over there, uh, it certainly does go very quick. You just roll with the punches when it happens and, uh, and do the best you can. Yeah, and then bus to old place. Yes. Right. Instead of a hour-long train trip, it's a two to three hour bus trip for them. And that's in the middle of peak hour traffic. So you can imagine what they feel, how they feel. Can't tell you, your guess is good in mind. I hope it's I hope it's in the next five minutes. As you can see, uh, a lot of angry passengers. But uh, I can understand that the heat doesn't help. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I feel for them, but uh, that's it's not much I can do. Six and seven. Yeah, six and seven. Very convenient. Yes. Oh, nothing is going at the moment. <laughs> one, one thing is compounded into two or three problems at the moment, so just working through it. At Route Control, they're working on getting the line back. Dealing with the high voltage power is always difficult, um, and now we need experts on site to tell us exactly what we can and can't do and how to rectify the situation. Fixing it could take hours. I reckon it's going to take all night to rectify it and hopefully we get it back for the morning. While it's congested inside the station, the police are keeping things moving outside. Our role is not only the railway station but surrounding of the railway station uh, as well. So if something happens, we can respond quick and fast. And also, it gives the confidence, the reassurance, the surrounding of the public transport hub is secured, and we're there to make sure that people do feel safe in that element.
back inside. It's now four hours after the incident and some trains are able to get through. From our end, it's still ongoing, but we're able to get people out. We're able to get people home. We're able to get them to as close to home as possible. Start from nine. Start from nine for Caulfield. Go quick. Trains will resume. How long does it take? Start from nine. Nine? Yeah. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for traveling with Metro. Yeah, it is a job well done. It's a lot of pressure up here when, it, when that does occur. It does get stressful, but at the end of the day, you know it's going to sort itself out and you just, you just move on. It's a new day at Flinders Street. Good morning, customers. Train on Platform 4 is your 817 Alamein train. This train runs direct to Richmond, stopping all stations to Alamein. And things are looking up. They fixed the problem. They were working all through the night, and I think they finished roughly about 4.15, 4.30, so just before services began. So they were really up against the clock. But there are still a few knock-on effects. Packenham, Cranbourne, it's, uh, they're still trying to catch up from yesterday because, essentially, all those trains are out of position. So, essentially, it's a busy morning from about 4.30 for the train control because they're all trying to catch up and try and get the trains back in position and trying to get the drivers back in position. It's been a difficult 24 hours for the man who heads up Melbourne's transport network and its iconic but century-old train hub. A station that was designed for a much smaller city. Melbourne is a city that started off and with a network designed for about one and a half million people, but now has over five million people living in it. And one of our challenges at the moment is how do you upgrade it uh, to cater not only with the people we have using it today, but the significant growth we anticipate over the coming years. The station is undergoing a multi-million pound upgrade, a project managed by Graham Kay. OK, we're heading up onto the roof space here now with some of the best views of Melbourne. In the early 1900s, Flinders Street was the busiest station in the world. And Graham has been tasked with restoring it to its former glory. Well, this is one of the most iconic buildings in Melbourne. People talk of Melbourne around the world. People don't know a lot about the city. They see a photo of Flinders Street, they know where they are. Flinders Street even has its own version of London's Big Ben, a tower housing a hundred-year-old clock mechanism. So we're now standing around the original mechanism that has been running this clock. This is what was here 110 years ago. When you go up to the next level, you'll see that connects to the four faces through just a simple arm, which feeds out to each of the clock faces, and each of the clocks are telling they're exactly in sync, so they're, they're telling, telling the same time. Remarkable. It's, instead, it's a pretty awe-inspiring space there are not too many people in this city that'll get to see this, so we and you are pretty lucky. Down on the platforms, it's not only the time that they're keeping an eye on. Right now, it's probably around 30 Celsius at the moment. Yep. It gets a lot hotter in Australia. It was 43 a couple of Fridays ago. You know, keep your fingers crossed the trains run well on those hot days, but... but there are some heat-related issues on hot days, for sure. It does get really hot up on the concourse, especially at Tabaret, our other entrance. It's a tin roof, so it does get quite hot. Well, we do have heaps of water runs, and our staff here are really friendly. Sometimes we get ice creams, so it's pretty good, yeah. And travelling in the heat can be disorientating. She's got all my belongings. I don't know where she is. So your mother's got all your my, belongings? My, yeah, she's got all my belongings and my other son in a stroller. Right. Um, I got on the train first to then help yeah, her yeah. on. So you've been separated? So we've been separate. I haven't got a clue where she is. She's visiting from the UK, so oh. she doesn't know what she's doing. What's her name? Mary. Mary? <laughs> yeah. Mary from England? That's it, yeah. OK, I'm class from German, and do they speak any English? Yeah, she speaks English. She comes from England. Her name is Mary. She's got my mobile. 
she has got her daughter's mobile. What we might do is ring that number before I send her up. We might be able to get things happening. While Malcolm deals with the missing grandmother on the platforms, upstairs in the control room... Assistant Station Master Trent O'Neill has to sort out another stressful incident. Control room to all staff. Please note if you see any police or PSOs around the station, can you please send them to the customer information centre on the concourse? So just have that call uh, requesting police. There's a, not really a domestic, a, a fight between two people unknown to each other. A woman has accused a man of taking photos of her at the station entrance. Police are questioning both people. You're the person that's been separated from your mother? Yes, that's right, yeah. yeah. The search for Mary, the missing English grandmother, has now moved to the control room. And there's good news. They've tracked her down. All right, look, I'll put your daughter on for you. Hello. Are you all right? And the million pound question, OK, where are you? All right, she'll be on a Sandy train. Name. So that'll, no, that'll run direct to Richmond. No worries. Do you want a bottle of water in it? You're OK? Oh, no, I'm fine. It turns out Grandma is only one stop away. That's one problem solved. But the incident with a man taking photos has just got odder. Uh, the police, they checked his phone. Uh, they found that he had images of other passengers of the train uh, who he thought was staring at him. Police uh, suggested that uh, uh, a little bit of paranoia there, that there's nothing really they could do, just have a chat to him, and uh, he's gone on his way, and the police have gone on their way. Fortunately, the one person who kept her cool was customer information advisor Amanda Aylwood. Yeah, so the hot weather often um, changes people's perspectives, make them a little bit more paranoid, a little bit crazy, that sort of thing. So, you know, just typical Flinders Street customer, I think. <laughs> Another busy morning is over, and once again, staff have to prepare for the busiest time on the network, the evening rush hour. Twenty-five miles from Flinders Street at the Epping Rail Depot, staff are prepping the train fleet. We're doing a after-morning peak clean. We'll get all these trains cleaned and inspected before it goes out for the season peak. And that happens every day, seven days a week, public holidays, everything. Mix grown up on the railway. I've actually been in the rail longer than I've known my wife. <laughs> yeah, I started 17 years old, I was. Started. Always doing the cleaning. I started off as a cleaner and just worked my way up. I'll look for any damage, any vandalism, so it can be reported and cleaned in the time span. Mm -hmm. And also I'll check the clean to make sure uh, the Hair greasy marks are removed, no fresh chewies on the ground, litter, any coke, coffee spills are mopped up. He's got a forensic eye. That's an egg stain. Yeah, someone's trying to throw an egg on the side of the train that just dripped down. How can you tell that's an egg stain? Uh, years of experience. <laughs> and he'll need all those years of experience to deal with what is about to happen out on the network. It's almost five o'clock at Flinders Street. The evening peak is underway. And 50,000 people are descending on the station to make their way home. Train on platform four is a Riversdale train. This train runs direct to Richmond, stopping all stations to Riversdale. Platform five. The Rovers, Sunbury like commuters, are out in force. To North Melbourne, all stations to Sunbury except South Kensington. And after recent self-harm scares, staff are extra vigilant. Unfortunately, self-harm is an issue on the network. Um, 
And I think a couple of weeks ago here on Platform 4, there was unfortunately a young lady that was a bit distressed. And luckily, the customers who saw her standing over the yellow line grabbed her arms and pulled her back before the train arrived. And it's things like that that we have to look out for. Train now arriving Platform 5 is the A23 Sunbury train. But there are just some incidents you can't spot. With the peak of the rush hour approaching, upstairs in the control room, major news is coming in of a tragic event. Yes, mate. Steve, Steve, someone struck at Angle 1. The Eltham Hersbridge Services terminating at uh, Clifton Hill. Control to all staff and CIC, please be aware that due to a person being struck by a train on the Hurstbridge line, all Hurstbridge services will be terminating at Clifton Hill until further notice. The fatality has happened on a busy commuter line. Details of the incident are still unclear, but with the evening rush hour fast approaching, one thing is certain, there will be major disruption right across the network. It's 5 p.m. right in the middle of rush hour at Australia's busiest station. And staff are dealing with a tragic incident out on the track. You don't know whether it was a um, suicide or um, just somebody being silly and running across the tracks, but it's basically going to create a bit of mayhem. For the second time in two days, rail commuters are facing the prospect of getting back on the buses. So we've got bus replacements between Clifton Hill and the Hyderabad station. Yeah. What we're really doing now is we try and organise busing, replacement bus services to come in, ferry all the passengers, given the time of day. Um, very challenging situation. It's take quite a while for buses to actually get in and arrive. Eight miles from Flinders Street, police are at the scene of the fatality. A five-mile stretch of busy commuter track has been closed. It's a police investigation. They'll close it down until they finish, which will be about three and a half hours. Yeah, yeah. Well, that takes them that time. They've got to talk to the driver involved. He must be pretty shattered that he's actually, yeah, yeah. So it takes time to go through all the procedure, yeah. Four zero two six. What is your current location? Over. At route control, they're having a logistical battle to keep rush hour passengers moving, and the situation is all too familiar. We've had quite a few fatalities in the, in the last week or two. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know what it's all about, but it's yeah, you have fits and starts with them. Trespassers, self harmers. There's quite a few. Probably, uh, we, on average, trespassers, probably two or three incidents per day, sometimes more. But yeah, we have plenty of them, unfortunately. Commuters are now arriving at Clifton Hill, where trains are being terminated. Thousands of people. It's peak time, so there's literally thousands of people who are try just trying to get home. And Mick Rigby and other rovers from Flinders Street have been sent out to help organise the bus replacement service that will leapfrog the blockage. Heidelberg, get this bus, that will take you direct to Heidelberg out there. Anyone for Heidelberg Express, the Heidelberg folks, that's right. The rail journey normally takes 15 minutes, but passengers are now at the mercy of slow moving bus queues. Most of them are going express to Heidelberg, there's a few that are stopping all stations as well. Due to a person being hit by a train, buses replace trains between Clifton Hill and Heidelberg. It's nearly 7 p.m. and out on the tracks, the police investigation is winding down. The buses are getting people home, and Mick can now get on his way too. It seems to be resolving itself quite nicely. Um, I'll jump on the next service back to Flinders and go and sign off there and then jump on my motorcycle and go home. It's looking quite good. Our platforms are sort of like um, fairly empty, which means we're getting passengers on the train and we're getting them up to Clifton Hill. That's yeah. Parliament over there and that's Melbourne Central. So it looks like they don't have any traffic problems either. So that means it's been a successful afternoon. We've managed to get all the passengers to Clifton Hill and hopefully from there 
um, we'll be able to get them moving along fairly soon. It's been a difficult 48 hours for everyone on the network. But the pace of life on the railway is relentless. And a new challenge is never far down the line. Go ahead, 104. Right. This train um, stops quickly coming into the platform, and the driver says the emergency stop tripped on something on the track. She does not know what it was. In the control room, assistant station master Trent O'Neill is receiving information from the rovers on platform five. They've spotted something on the tracks. Hey, Georgie. Yeah. The 237 Water Gardens yeah, and the 241 a... Upfield. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Probably need to bring the floor down and snuff it out. Is it, what is it? Is it metal or what is it? Just bring the bloody floor down. And the nifty claw can be used to retrieve all kinds of objects left on the tracks. Mobile phones, pram wheels, um, yeah, driver's keys. Driver's <laughs> keys, yeah. <laughs> yep. Hey, tidy, tidy. I'll grab. The object is heavy, so this is a two claw job. It's like a rider, skate type thing, skate, skater. Yeah, want me to take ice property? Further down the line, they're also focusing on the tracks. An army of workers are upgrading the rails, replacing the wooden sleepers which hold the tracks in place with long-lasting concrete ones. So these timber sleepers are life expired, so by installing concrete sleepers on a face provides more longevity to the track structure. So each process involves a machine coming in, taking out the timber sleeper, removing the ballast, the concrete's inserted, and then two labourers fasten up that concrete sleeper, which takes generally about a minute a sleeper. There's maintenance work also going on at the Epping train depot, but today's shift is sadly far from routine. Mick Rowe and his team have to clean the train that was involved in the previous day's fatality. I, I get told, yes, it was a male, female, children or whatever. I don't pass it on to my guys, because it's, it is trauma and they don't need that in their mind, they just go ahead and do their job. I got underneath and done the extra cleaning myself. I just asked for the end of the number, what, what end the train happened on, and that's all I want, that's all I need to know. I don't need to know if it's a woman, female, what the age, I don't need to know any of that. Out on the tracks, the engineers are making good progress, upgrading the rails. Uh, there'll be commuters, there'll be passengers on our trains uh, who won't, won't even realise this has happened. At Flinders Street, staff have nearly got through another busy week. But there's one last challenge. It's Friday, and it's going to be an eventful night. It is a busy time. You've got the tennis happening today. Uh, we've got cricket as well at uh, Melbourne's Central Cricket Ground. We've got some concert happening as well. On patrol with his team tonight is Officer Mohammed Alam. There's a lot of uh, public who will be taking their public transport tonight. So we'll uh, be very busy in terms of foot traffic. And if anything comes along, we're just going to make sure that we deal accordingly and people feel safe to use their public transport. Watching over the network at route control is Shane Toll. And for the moment, the sports fans are the least of his worries. 
it's extremely busy and uh, compared to the situation on account of very shorter drivers tonight. Driver issues and signalling problems on the uh, single line section between Dandenong and Cranbourne, they're certainly our biggest problems at the moment. And it's about to get worse. See how long they uh, anticipate before the police are on site. Brilliant. All right, thanks, mate. Thank there are reports of a trespasser on track 15 miles from Flinders Street at Middle Gorge Station. There you go, mate. Any clue now on what time we might get them out there at Middle Gorge? They're going out now. Actually, yeah, we've got a situation there with a male. Uh, he looks a little bit um, disturbed or such uh, out at Middle Gorge. Uh, he's in imminent danger of the train line, so we're obligated to stop our services there. It will have an adverse effect on the on the, the tail end of the PM peak, yeah, for sure, um, and and could impact on our, our cricket traffic later. So vital sort of situation, but uh, we're doing our best to sort it out, yeah. It's a busy but so far peaceful Friday evening at Flinders Street. Doing his best to keep it that way is police officer Mohammed Alam. And as you can see around you, it's just like people everywhere. Um, so it's a combination of everyone on a Friday night going out and uh, enjoying what Melbourne has to offer in summertime. But at root control, they've been dealing with a more stressful situation. There have been reports of a trespasser on the tracks at a local station, and police are now at the scene. Uh, current advice is Middle Gorge issue ongoing, police on site, trains are stopped, so it's pretty consistent. After a police search, there's no sign of anyone on the tracks. Can we put a train through with caution? We should have line clear in, in fully if no one sees him. I'd say by 1800 we should be fully back with uh, no need to warn the drivers any further. It's come just at the right time as the network heads towards a busy Friday night. The number's not too bad at the moment, currently tracking at uh, 97.27. However, we're only sort of just into the peak. Hopefully we can still maintain target and we'll see how we go, yeah. But at Flinders Street, it's all go. The station is a hub for people heading for a night out in the city. But it's also having to deal with thousands of excitable cricket fans. India has beaten Australia. A result that has left at least one man bowled over. Well, I'm sure you're celebrating because you won the cricket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you want to go home and sleep? Is your friend going to take you home? How much did he have to drink? Jesus, the whole thing. It's all right, I would have done the same thing, you know, Colin. Oh, my God. We're just going to make sure that he's in a good, stable condition where he can jump into the train, go with his friend back home safely, and that's all we did. Uh, but if it was different context, we'd have to arrest him for drunk in a public place. This train is now ready to depart. Seeing the old platform six. Pakenham train is now ready to depart. Up in the control room, William McKenzie is dealing with another Friday night incident. The 1853 down Pakenham, carriage number 2535T, got a report of someone in a pool of vomit, passed out on the train. And it throws up some memories. Me, personally, I haven't had to deal with many um, gruesome situations. There have been occasional ones where people have done um, They've either weed on the train or even done a poo on the train. You've never had to walk into a train gun, like, and just randomly found blood on the train gun? No, I'm, I've never found blood. Really? Never found blood on the train. I've heard of blood on the train, but I've never had to attend to them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. You, you've been lucky. Yes, been very lucky. Some good vomit scenarios. Weeing and pooing, but... They're a bit, yeah, nothing too gruesome. I hope I never have anything really gruesome either. It's a nasty job, but there's a well-rehearsed routine. Well, we're going to clean up the vomit and we... It doesn't bother me anymore because I've been doing, like, four years. In the start, it used to bother me and uh, it will make me feel very bad, but now I've got used to it. See what this condition is. Further down the platform, William McKenzie 
is now having to deal with another Friday night casualty. Okay. Take your time, okay? We're here to help you. Don't worry. Have you had much to drink today? Drink? Alcohol? Yeah. All right. William leaves it to Officer Allum to do the heavy lifting. They manage to get the man up to the concourse, but just as they have one situation under control, there's another issue in the female toilets. Yeah, just come up on the radio, but I'll just go and see what's there. So a woman has been trapped in a cubicle for over an hour. When police emerge, it turns out it was a different sort of blockage. False alarm. Definitely. No, she was very close to the train. <laughs> the woman hasn't yet emerged from the toilets, and they still haven't got the drunk man off their hands. It could be a long night. I can't tell you how long it will take tonight, but um, hopefully the next half an hour, the ambulance will be here. Out on platform three, the vomit train is now pulling in. And the crack cleaning squad goes into action. There's action two upstairs. Oh. Hello, Lisa. How are you? Hello, sir. My name's Nadia. I'm with the ambulance, all right? Can you, have you been drinking Nadia. tonight? Yeah. Only alcohol? Severely drunk. Had a lot to drink. Yeah, he was absolutely drunk. But in the ladies' loo, there's still no movement and another hour has gone by. Still there, so we're gonna take one of the medics inside and see if that female requires any further medical attention. It's a concern that she's been there for such a long period of time. Fell asleep. I oh, know, he's fell asleep. She fell asleep. On the toilet? Yep. Yeah. So she's coming out. She's OK. Yeah. Done. Almost an hour and a half, yeah. Probably have a nap or something. It doesn't look like she's intoxicated or not. Uh, I don't know why she would fall asleep, but from our point of view, she's uh, absolutely OK, So, which is a good news for us. Whew, all right. Have a good night. The Friday frenzy has brought a difficult week to a successful conclusion. And this century-old, iconic station has once again risen to the challenge of keeping this vibrant and expanding city moving. We have done our job and uh, let's see what's next. They are the great railway stations of the world. The biggest, the busiest, the liveliest. Standing still is not a good option. <laughs> You're gonna get knocked down. There is a big uh, fight. From New York's Penn Station and the epic Grand Central. As soon as they come into this space, I always hear people exclaim, oh my gosh, look at that. To Calcutta's heaving Howrah Terminal. The trains are crammed full. Some people are hanging out of it, some people are squeezing into it. Melbourne's iconic but overstretched Flinders Street. This week was going to be the first week back when they could have a train all the way from home to Flinders Street. And what are we Monday night? Peak hour and we're back to the buses. And the super efficient 26 platformed Zurich's Hauptbahnhof, where everything and everyone is at the mercy of the clock. I see the time. My mind tell me, man, go the next train. For some, it's the gateway to a journey of a lifetime. For others, a one-way ticket to the daily frustrations of rail travel. To follow the next schedule, I'm tired of missing my connection. 
with some familiar problems. It's the leaves. Cause the train to slide upon braking. And new ones too. You definitely do get kangaroos on the track, but they're lightning fast. And hopped on, hopped over and hopped off. It's round the clock and non-stop. So far, so good. <laughs> but the day is young. It's early morning in New York City. A Manhattan, the world's most famous and expensive piece of real estate, is about to double its population as a million and a half commuters head in through the two great transport hubs that dominate New York's network. On Manhattan's west side, the enormous Pennsylvania station. Penn for short, the busiest railroad station in North America. And just 10 blocks away on the east side, the world's most iconic station, Grand Central Terminal. It's a kind of a place where everyone walks in and as soon as they come into this space, I always hear people exclaim, oh my gosh, look at that. I think it's the scale, this perfect proportion in the marble, the ceiling, and the incredible windows that are both ends of the terminal. It is kind of a great temple of transportation. You really do have the feeling that you're walking into a cathedral or this incredible gateway uh, to transport you to another place. This is the terminal for over a quarter of a million commuters coming in from Connecticut and New York suburbs. Good morning, how are you? On duty oh, outside is taxi dispatcher Jesse Batts, and he's doing what he can to make the morning commute that little bit smoother. Sometimes you have to have a smile. New Yorkers is in a hurry, and sometimes they, the way they are, you know, and sometimes a smile goes a long way. How you doing, partner? Everything good? All right. You must have made a lot of money because you smile it. Across town at Penn, New York's other major transport hub, they handle commuters from New Jersey and Long Island, as well as long distance travelers from Washington, Chicago, New Orleans, and Miami. What's up? Penn Terminal Manager Steve Tarasiano helps keep it all running. There is a unique dynamic here at Penn Station. We are one of the largest uh, transportation hubs in the country, if not the world. About 750,000 people a day traverse this building. We have three major carriers coming in here. We have six subway lines. It takes a coordinated effort every day. Just dealing with the public every day is an adventure. Getting ready for this morning's adventure is customer ambassador Ashley Lynn. Thank you. I'm trying to get my train. All right. You know what I mean? But keep <laughs> working. I'm trying to find out if you let me. All right. New Yorkers are really tough. We're fast paced. We know what we want, we know what we need to do, and we go when we do it. Nine miles down the line is Penn's major feeder station the Long Island Railroad's transport hub in Jamaica, Queens. Every day, 300,000 city workers travel through or change trains here on their way to Brooklyn or Manhattan. And here too, station manager Pat Gerakaris is getting ready for the morning rush. The peak rush hour starts here at 6 a.m., but we really start to pick up uh, with customer uh, traffic here around 7 a.m. Services on its 10 branch lines and 500 miles of track need to be carefully synchronized. Hey, Chris, the Atlantic Terminal, is it on two or three next? Track three? So when the doors open here, you can, uh, is he able to pass through? Our customers are counting on us to keep the wheels turning and get them into the city on time, stay to that schedule, and we're doing whatever we can. There's a whole bunch of people working behind the scenes to make that happen. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Kew Garden Station will be next. Only the first six cars are platform. Any cousins in the rear four cars, please walk up if you wish to exit. 
Conductor Kenneth Jordan has been getting people into the city from Long Island for the past 15 years. It took years to get ready to balance, to do this balancing act. You gotta be like a juggler. <laughs> I'm good, how about you, good? Oh, tickets please, oh, tickets. With 640 daily trains, tickets. it's the USA's busiest commuter service. Constantly, busy, always on the go. 2018 or an 18. At Penn Station Control, okay. keeping a close eye on Kenneth's train and the rest of the rush hour service is Assistant Station Master Michael Dougherty. Pretty much we monitor the trains as they're leaving Jamaica to Kew Gardens, Forest Hills, everything west into Penn Station. Here's your round trip back, thank you. I'm an action guy, I like the action, but it could be high stress in here, you know? A lot of phones ringing, a lot of things going on. Um, so you have to stay focused. This is the train to Penn Station. Watch your step, watch your step. Yeah, you need some help? No, I just need to turn around. A lot of people. <laughs> Penn Station, watch your step. More than 150,000 people are now arriving at Penn Station. Rush hour is in full flow. With 21 tracks, seven tunnels, and three concourses on three levels, Penn is essentially a small town in the heart of the city. What's going on, fellas? Manager Steve thrives on the energy of the place. There's a lot that goes into the running of this place. I mean, just the sheer volume of people, everything really has to work as a well-oiled machine, and it's the coordination between the different groups, the different departments, that makes this place run. Helping oil the pen machine is the West Side Yard, a 26-acre depot in the heart of Manhattan, where trains are cleaned and maintained before going back into service. It's very hot. Trains are coming in and out every 10, 15 minutes. These trains are packed, you know what I mean? Like, stay in the room only. So you know how the trains have to be clean, and they have to be right, and they have to smell good, because the people are getting on them. And if it's 100 people in one car, it's a little tight. Like the trains, the cleaners, known as car appearance maintainers, are on a tight schedule and need to make sure nothing is left behind. Definitely plenty of pizza boxes and beer bottles and coffee cups. One good thing is it used to be a lot more newspapers, but now with uh, everybody reading in their phones, there's less newspapers. On the concourse, the rush hour rhythm is picking up. Yes, Fridays, you want to go straight up these stairs and it's going to be to your left. You have to be fast-paced, upbeat, you have to be ready to go and you have to know what you want to do. Did you need some help? So to get your ticket, you're going to go up these stairs right here on your left. We're just all about communication, communication, communication. Thank you. You have a good day. So that's what we do. So far, the rush hour service is running smoothly, but Steve Tarasiano not only has to get through morning peak, he also has to manage New York's staggering Friday night commute. So far, so good. <laughs> so far, so good, but the day is young. It's 9 a.m. at Grand Central Terminal in Midtown Manhattan. The morning rush hour is still underway as over a quarter of a million people pass through on the daily commute. Located on 42nd Street and Park Avenue, Grand Central was opened in 1913 to transport growing numbers of workers into the fast expanding and vibrant city. But there's always been more to the station than getting commuters in and out on time. Often you come to Grand Central and you see people that you know. It happens all the time, because this, this is really for New York. It's public square. It's the place where everyone comes and crosses. In the bowels of the station, the terminal's world-famous oyster bar is setting up for the day. We get everything. 
businessmen, commuters that are coming in from Connecticut or Westchester or Long Island to the city, tourists who come from Europe, Asia, South America. They love seafood. There's intense activity upstairs, too. Grand Central is a major symbol of New York City and is permanently on high alert. Transport police officer Ali Schmidt and her partner Mac are on duty this morning. He's constantly working. He's a two-year-old German Shepherd with tons of energy. See, right now, he's watching everyone as they pass by, and people go to work every day throughout this terminal, and we want to make sure that our commuters know that they're safe here. Stay. And outside Grand Central, taxi dispatcher Jesse Batts is keeping tabs on some of the city's 13,000 rush hour yellow cabs. Now, you see, we just got four more cars now. This is where the clicker come in. This is the clicker. Don't forget the clicker. Take a number, and then they total it up for the entire day. And it's in the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. Now I'm gonna see you. We're all set, they're coming. Have a good day. They're still coming too at the Long Island Railroad commuter hub, Jamaica Station. At Jamaica's dispatch control, they synchronize 640 daily trains along 10 branch lines to a tight timetable. So many tracks and so many trains can fit on those tracks at certain times, so. It's a domino effect. One late train can take down 10 in a row until we catch up. We do our best. But for some New Yorkers this morning, best is not enough. Local train of Brooklyn is now boarding on track four, and station only track five. There's been a last minute timetable change, and customer usher Nathan Douglas is now in the firing line. It's quite a pressurized job, I mean, you know. It can get pretty hectic. To follow the damn schedule, I'm tired of missing my connection. I'm sorry, miss. Where are you heading? All I can do is apologize, miss. Uh, I'm very sorry. You just have to let them vent. They don't like to see their train leaving when the connect connecting train is coming in, so I can understand where the lady's coming from. Down the line at Penn, staff also have to keep their cool during the rush hour. We do get a lot of commuters that come to the window with their own individual problems that you have to... Um, kind of help out, so um, a lot of patience <laughs> and a smile, <laughs> a lot of patience and a smile. You'll get on the back, right, get on the Babylon change in Jamaica for Hempstead. Okay, track 20? Track 20, go now. Thank you. Thanks. On the concourse, terminal manager Steve Tarasiano is keeping an eye on passenger flow. There's a lot of traffic, a lot of activity here through the day. Again, morning rush hour, evening rush hour are our peak times. So that's when, you know, that's when push comes to shove here. You can see how many people are moving around. We have a lot going on, and it's just a matter of keeping them moving, keeping it safe, and not impeding their flow so they can get to work. And to keep passengers moving, they need to keep Penn's trains moving. <laughs> 15 miles east of Penn is the Long Island Railroad's Hillside Train Depot. You can hear the electric traction motors drawing power. And this morning, General Manager Brad Jenkins is dealing with an all too familiar rail problem, leaves on the line. 
As the fall comes and the leaves start to fall off the trees, the oil comes out and transfers to the rail, the slippery rail conditions um, cause the train to slide upon braking. It's like driving your car on snow and ice. And falling foliage can cause a surprising amount of wheel damage. Right here, you have a, a shelling, a, a small shelling and a small flat spot, about a one inch flat spot. The flat spots make noise, they pound the train, it's bad for the infrastructure, it, it damages the rail, it damages the rail car. Each repair has a strict schedule, and they need to get this train back in service. We have timetables that are, are tight because we're trying to make sure we get enough trains to get our passengers into the city, home at night. It causes us to really, really work as hard as we can to keep up so we have enough cars in service for our customers. Penn Station, can I help you? Tom, Michael, how are you? Back at Penn Station Control. 1919, leave it there with the doors open. Michael Dougherty has hit a problem. Can you confirm your run number today, please? With a train that's already out on track. Roger, Long Island, 2315, run 86. Thanks for your help today, guys. It's ready to leave the platform, but it lacks a crew. This crew that operates this train normally has another train to do, so I have to make sure that that train is covered and he's not sure where the replacement team is. I'm sure I'll get a phone call later of the whereabouts of that crew, but I just want to make sure that I have all my ducks in a row. It's going to be tight. And in the meantime, he has to stay on top of the trains that are running. Raymond 48. <laughs> track 17, please. 1105 train to Babylon is now boarding on track 17. Stopping at Woodside, Jamaica, St. Albans, Rockville, Center, Baldwin, Freeport, Merrick, Belmore, Wontor, Seaford, Massapequa, Massapequa Park, Amityville, Copeg, Lindenhurst, Babylon. In the rush hour, we move about 130 trains. Change at Jamaica for the train to Hempstead. And you're sharing the space with New Jersey Transit, and you're sharing the space with Amtrak. So you're, you all got to be in touch with each other. You all got to be in sync. Ten blocks away at Grand Central, there's a much bigger challenge going on, 40 metres below the station concourse. Judith Kunoff has been involved with it all for the past three years. The construction of a brand new $11 billion rail terminal. Hello. It will allow Long Island passengers not only to come into Penn on Manhattan's west side, but also here into Grand Central on the east side. You see in that door, that's the access to east side. East that's, side access. That's east side access. So the, seriously, the $11 billion job is going on behind those doors, yes. So this is the entrance to the site, and we can hear all the Metro North um, announcements above us. Directly above us, we have active trains, active Metro North trains. We're probably standing below tracks 41 and 42. And this is what Manhattan really looks like underneath all the skyscrapers. Manhattan is uh, built on uh, rock. And um, we New Yorkers, most of us taking geology class and everything, we, the one thing that we walk away with is Manhattan is built on schist. So if you turn around, that's the schist. And so when we did the drilling and blasting of the cavern, which we'll get to below, that's what we were drilling and blasting through. The slate-like rock schist is built up of multiple layers of minerals. It's an ideal bedrock for the city's gigantic high rises. That's our schist. We're very proud of it. The terminal will run as far as 52nd Street, all beneath east side Manhattan. So we are going to go from the south and work our way north. From the south, 42nd Street. This is 44th, so we've now walked from 42nd 
to 44, and we'll turn off at about 48th Street. this very, very large girder. A series of girders like this needed to, needed to have been installed to pick up the load of an active live roadway. Where between Madison Avenue and Park Avenue, this is 48th Street above us. It is a three lane road. So all of that load needed to be transferred to these girders. With life continuing unaffected above ground, New Yorkers are also oblivious to the work taking place even further underground. The escalators are going in here. The new terminal is on three levels, extending up to 50 metres below ground. But for the moment, the only way down is rough and ready. Back at Penn Station, terminal manager Steve Terraciano is almost through the morning commute. How are we doing, guys? But he's already thinking ahead to the evening peak. So we got a lot of problems, my friend. A lot of problem, like we're good by three o'clock kind of problem, or a lot of problem like this is going to be a big staircase for a couple of days. Probably staircase for a couple of days. Yeah. Wonderful. Yes, beautiful. Right? All right. Closing the staircase. It may be simple in a whole scheme of things. At Penn Station, when you've got. 100,000 people trying to traverse the station, that one staircase becomes very important. A Grand Central, they also have the evening peak on their minds. Security is a major priority. Yes, good boy. And with over a quarter of a million commuters about to pass back through the station, Mac is all ears. Eyes. He is checking bags as we walk past people. And nose. Heel. Mac is highly trained to sniff out suspicious objects and some harmless ones too. Sit. When we walk into a pizzeria, we smell pizza. When they walk into a pizzeria, they smell the sauce, the pepperoni, the salt and pepper, the dough. If he didn't have the nose he did, he'd be out of a job. Come on. Deep below Grand Central. <laughs> I'm just too weak. Judith is now 50 meters below ground. So this is the shaft that we just went down. This is shaft five, okay? She has reached the lower level of the new terminal. It's definitely taking shape. We have two caverns, an east and a west. If you were to take the Chrysler building and lie her down on her side, she would have fit within each, you know, each one of the caverns. So it's over a thousand foot long. And to build the terminal is very much like building a ship within a bottle. All of the material comes in through Queens. It's brought in through the tunnels to the cavern. So very much like, you know, wine bottle with the neck. All of that material comes in through that neck and into the cavern to be built very much like a ship within a bottle. And that's pretty much what you're seeing here now. Above ground at the depot, they're repairing the train wheels damaged by leaves on the line. It needs to be back in service for Penn's Friday night peak. Nick Jingola operates a massive milling machine that chips away layers of metal to make the wheel rim smooth again. It's just made to the profile of the wheel, so it, it, it makes the wheel back to factory specs. We generally cut five to six axles a day, depending on how bad the defects are and how much metal has to be removed. But the repair is taking longer than expected. That other wheel, the number one, had rolling contact feet on the far side. The little cracks all the way around, it took four passes to get them all out. This wheel won't go on the machine again. There's a limit to how many times you can cut a wheel. You cut the wheel, you reduce the life. Once he's down in the shop to an inch and a sixteenth on the thickness of that rim, if it's below that, we have to change the wheels. All these wheels are ready to roll. But there's still one more tricky and dangerous job.
At Grand Central, Judith is going even further underground. She's now reached the lowest level of the east side access. The newly dug train tunnel running from Long Island under the East River and into the new Manhattan terminal where it splits into several tracks. If we turn around behind us where we came from, this is one of those splits where we're breaking up into two. We were on the lower level. Above us is another two tracks. It will take another three years before the terminal, deep underground central, is open to passengers. Once Eastside Access is built, Long Island Railroad can take 50% of the capacity, ultimately, and bring them to the other side of Manhattan. Back at the depot for Long Island trains to Penn, the train, damaged by leaves on the line, is now almost ready to return into service. But there's one last vital task. This is the third rail contact shoe. The height of that shoe is critical because it's what connects with the third rail to power the train. As we true the wheels, the height of that shoe will drop. If you cut enough off the wheel and don't adjust that contact point, you could tip over your third rail and cause a lot of infrastructure problems. Now they have to carefully recharge the train with 750 volts of electricity. That's the last stage. Our, our work is done. The train's going back in service. But at Penn Station, the hard work is just starting. They're expecting a trickier rusher than usual. There's an important ice hockey game at Madison Square Garden. And the famous arena sits right on top of the station. When you have the sporting events going on, you've got a lot of cross commuting. It's masses of people coming through here. Change at Jamaica for the air traffic jam deck. Now boarding track 17. And announcer Raymond will have a front row seat. Have you ever seen The Lion King? You know the scene when Simba is in the canyon and all the wildebeest come rushing down? That's what happens when they announce your track number at Penn Station. It's the calm before the storm of the evening rush hour at Grand Central. And Manhattan's fast-paced New Yorkers are taking a breather at the station's oyster bar. This is a Blue Point oyster, local from Long Island. Grabbing something from the food market. On the fresh seafood side, salmon is number one by far. And getting in a few sets of tennis on the station's fourth floor. It's fun. <laughs> Doesn't it look like fun? Just knowing that so many people just walk down just below us, trying to catch trains and the hustle and bustle. What's up, guys? Ten blocks away on the west side of Manhattan, at New York's other great transport hub, Penn Station, terminal manager Steve Terraciano is anticipating a much busier evening than usual. New York Rangers ice hockey team are playing the Arizona Coyotes at Madison Square Garden, which is directly above the station. So we'll have the rush hour, we'll have people heading home from the city, but at the same time, we're also gonna have crowds coming in for the hockey game tonight. Out on the tracks, drivers Neil Bicar and Nick Fisito are ensuring there are enough trains to go round. They're making an express delivery, an empty passenger train for Penn Station. Our equipment, non-passenger trains, have the same tight schedule that our passenger trains do, where if this train's not back where it has to be at a specific time, it's going to impact our passenger trains leaving on time. And during our uh, rush hour, it's very important to have these trains where they need to be. After morning rush hour, some trains are taken out of service. But as evening peak approaches, they need to be back at Penn ready to roll again. Coming up to our hillside support facility, a lot of equipment trains will be coming out of here. 
and all these trains will be making their way to Penn Station for the PM rush hour tonight. A Grand Central, the pace is also picking up. Where are you going? Right. The next available train is a 335, track 103. 103 is downstairs. You're welcome. But not all inquiries at the information booth are about the timetable. You want to know what the most frequent asked question is? Is the staircase in Grand Central Terminal in the movie Untouchables? They ask us that every day. And when we tell them it was filmed in Chicago, they never believe us. Back out on the tracks, Nick and Neil have Manhattan in their sights. I've seen it a lot, but it's still a beautiful sight every time you see it. But the clock is still ticking. This is the East River Tunnels, right under the water, right into Manhattan to Penn Station. This train will probably go out in 30 to 40 minutes by the time it gets down to the yard and the crew sets it up for eastbound. Nick and Neil's empty passenger train is now received by Lamel Armour and his team at Penn's West Side Yard. They have to prep it ready for service, and with rush hour fast approaching, the pressure is on. So this is a packed train for rush hour service, carrying over maybe 2,000, 3,000 people both ways, you know, three or four times. So we want to make sure that when it's leaving time that this train is ready to go. We are working in real time, so everything in here has to make service. So if one of these trains don't leave for whatever reason, it backs everything up. It's like a domino effect. At Grand Central, the countdown has begun. It's less than half an hour before rush hour. And police officer Ali Schmidt and sidekick Mac are making sure the trains are safe to go. Come on, heel. He's all excited. He sees the train and he wants to get on it and, and work his nose and see if there's anything um, suspicious on the trains. So look at him, he loves to go to work. Come on, let's go. Come here, come on. Let's go. Mac, come. Mac is highly trained to search for explosives. Good boy. Check up. Good boy. Yes, a good boy. And he did not indicate, so that's a good thing. Vital safety checks are also being carried out at West Side Yard. Road car inspector Pedro Perez walks the length of the train to test the parking brakes in all 12 cars. That's applied. Now I'm going to release it. That's released. With the parking brakes released, Lamel and his team check each of the car's other braking mechanisms. You see that little space inside? That's the tread brake unit. That thing is off right now. It's released. Once he goes back to applied, that tread brake unit closed back on the wheel. So we have to make sure every brake releases and applies correctly. You don't want to run a red train. <laughs> no, we don't want that. that. That won't be good. Emergency equipment. The train breaks down in route. Every day we check, make sure all the components are here, platform. OK. And uh, fire extinguishers, check. And when Pedro finally finishes his detailed safety inspection... It's working. It's good to go. There's a quick sound check. I test the horn. Yep, yep, my horn is good. Nine miles east at Jamaica Station, the afternoon peak has started. As of right now, we're in good shape. We're ready to roll. And tonight, New York has big game fever. Let's go, Rangers. Let's go, Rangers! Let's go, Rangers! Right, yeah. At Penn, too, with thousands of evening commuters and hockey fans expected, customer ambassador Ashley is limbering up for the big game. 
you're gonna get a lot of people coming out from Long Island. So you have to be able to move. That's why I'm always moving, looking around, moving like this, like this, because people are running from this way, running from that way, running from this way, running from that way, and I'm dead smack in the middle. New York is America's most densely populated city. Half the size of London with a matching 8 million residents, its transport systems are on the front line every day. New York, New York. It's so nice, they named the city twice. New York's Friday Russia is underway. And Long Island's main hub, Jamaica Station, is beginning to feel the effects as over 150,000 passengers start to pass through. We want to go into this PM rush hour uh, full steam ahead with no issues um, and take it all the way through. How's it going, gentlemen? Hey, guys. How's it going? So far, we're looking good today. Uh, on or close everywhere. Oh, great. So. Things are looking good. Cool. You know, something minor could cause ripples. We need to watch out, so we try to be as prepared and as proactive as possible. In Manhattan, trains are now leaving and arriving every two seconds. And at the Western world's busiest commuter hub, Penn Station, it's full on. This is where it is. So right now, this is a Friday, so this is actually the peak of rush hour around like 5.30. This is, everybody's going home or going out, so the, everybody's here. Or coming in from different states or wherever they're coming from, this is where it is. But it's not just the Friday commute they are having to deal with. Let's go Rangers! All right! <laughs> Thousands of ice hockey fans are also flooding in for tonight's big game. Right above us sits Madison Square Garden. When there are big games, big events at the garden, you will see people coming in in droves, dressed in their, in their team's colors. Whether it's a concert, it's a sporting event, this really is where it all happens. So there's a lot going on upstairs. Behind the scenes in the control room, I still have to pay attention. When I'm not paying attention, I still have to pay attention. 2061 has got to go down to the west side. The fact there's a wiper on the west end. On the west end. There's a problem. Yeah, all right, 2061 has got to go down. It's got an effective wiper on the west end. It sounds like a small one. 2061. All right, thanks, bud. But even a broken windscreen wiper can have big consequences. The fact the wiper on the west end, it's got to get looked at. It's got to get looked at by uh, our maintenance of equipment in Westside Yard. So they, you know, once we get direction to send it down, it's gotta go down. That means for me, I have to find a new train. I gotta find a new piece of equipment. Front of house, hundreds of thousands of people are crossing the concourse. Change at Babylon for the train to Batchel, now boarding track 21. Oh, track 21, oh, Standing still is not a good option. <laughs> You're gonna get knocked down. You're gonna get ran over. Excuse me, sorry. Commuters rushing to platforms are coming up against fans arriving for the hockey. There's a lot of hustle and bustle going throughout the station now, and it's challenging to figure out the logistics of customer flow. Should we have an issue, got to figure out how we're going to keep the place up and running. They're running to the track, and you're standing in their way. They don't see you. They just see their track. Across Manhattan, Grand Central is having it easier tonight, as they only have commuters to deal with. 
Even so, it's still non-stop for the people who work there. Seven hundred and fifty thousand people come here a day. They say. Oh yeah. yeah. Forty six, forty seven. You're welcome. You can, you can walk over there if you want. We communicate at the window in the information booth about maybe about thirty five hundred. Now, if there's a service disruption, you're talking about five thousand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And it's a lot of talking. At Penn, with fans now at the game and commuters on their way home, they've got through a tricky evening. The best thing about this station is just, it's Penn Station, it's alive, it is always moving. You know, they say the city never sleeps, Penn Station never sleeps. New York, New York, where tomorrow they'll wake up and make a brand new start of it. We run 24-7, 365, and it's, it's always something new here. You know, that's what I like. It keeps us sharp. They are the great train stations of the world. The biggest, the busiest, the liveliest. Standing still is not a good option. <laughs> You're going to get knocked down. There is a big uh, fight. Epic gateways to epic cities. As soon as they come into this space, I always hear people exclaim, oh my gosh, look at that. A journey across four continents. The trains are crammed full. Some people are hanging out of it, some people are squeezing into it. This stop, it's the super-efficient 26-platform Zurich Hauptbahnhof, where staff face a daily battle. We're missing. I'm sliding. With the tracks and trains. Oh. Well, it's probably supposed to be turned to. With the passengers. Nine, 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 And with the world's most demanding clock. I see the time. My mind tell me, man, go the next train. This is Zurich Hauptbahnhof, one of the biggest and grandest stations in Europe. It handles 3,000 trains a day, more than any other European railway hub. The sheer volume of arrivals and departures here make Zurich Hauptbahnhof one of the busiest stations in the world. It's able to deal with so much train traffic because of its vast scale. Its central concourse is the size of three football pitches. It has 26 platforms spread over four levels and a network of underground tunnels which allow trains to move in and out from either direction. And it's one of the world's most punctual services, with 90% of trains arriving on schedule. All of them regulated by the iconic Swiss railway clock. Today it's up to station controllers Laura Bamert and Mario Meister to meet the high expectations of Swiss passengers. They get so easily mad because the train's like only three minutes delayed. I, I cannot tell you how important that is. It's it's like top of the range. With a delay of three minutes, they are not, not happy that uh, the train is late. And uh, in Switzerland, you have connecting trains within three, four, five minutes. So when one train is late by five minutes, the passenger can miss the other train in the other station. It's coming up to afternoon Russia, when 250,000 people will make their way through the station. The service is running smoothly now, but nothing stays the same on the railway. It's quite calm uh, now, but it can turn around suddenly, so 
five minutes. Oh, there we have something. An emergency call is coming through from a train on platform eight, and it's not good news for several reasons. Look, it's just got a person with cramp on falls. Get it? Can you get in action? Got us very off glass eight. Medicinische Notfall. Glass eight. Come on. Customer supervisor Jacek Dobrovsky is on his way. Now we will see um, what happened with the rescue. Everything is possible. The emergency services are on site and paramedics are now on board treating the patient. A woman who's suddenly been taken ill. We have already 160 travelers in the train. In 10 minutes, the train has to depart from here. If not, um, the travelers have to take another train. Any more delay could mean cancelling the service. We can no keine Prognose machen. Um, die Sicherheit ist da, Ambulanz ist da. Und die Leute sind auf dem Zug informiert. The time is running to do the right things. Doing her bit to keep the station running to time is driver Melinda Fuchs. The timetable is very strict. And there are a lot of trains, so it can get a little messy sometimes. So if there's a technical issue here, for example, it's not a, a very good place to have a problem because so many trains will be affected by it. Punctuality is, it's not always that easy as people think it is. They just think, well, it's the train driver. There are so many reasons why a train could be late. And sometimes, but not very often, it's actually us. <laughs> It's not so punctual on platform eight. The good news, though, is that the patient is now well enough to be moved and the train won't be cancelled. The train starts with a delay about 10 minutes or more, but uh, the people uh, in the train, I think they are really happy that they can continue with their journey. But uh, the most important thing is the, the rescue. The patient has suffered serious stomach cramps. She's on her way to hospital, and the train is now on its way too. This train are going with a delay, and now uh, it's done. We have, uh, I think, today perhaps some more uh, difficult situations. We will see. This is Route Control, the state-of-the-art operation center, which manages much of the network's 795 stations and 3,000 miles of track. And Zurich Station is the hub of the whole system. The station is sort of the heart of the traffic in terms of the amounts of passengers and the amounts of trains that go in and out. If something goes wrong here, you will have uh, knock-on effects further down the road. It's now 4 p.m. and commuters are beginning to make their way to the station for their trains home. Trains are arriving and leaving every few minutes. Rush hour is now in full flow. But in station control, there's bad news. Einfach als Info zwischen der Ursache und St. Margrethe. Dort hat es eine Kollision mit dem Lastwagen. Und das ist total unterbrochen. Gell? Tschüss. The train collision with a truck on the track. The east part of Switzerland. And there is um, every train in this 
These areas are cancelled. Pictures of the incident are coming in. A meat delivery lorry has been hit by a freight train at a level crossing. It's happened at a tricky place, the main artery through eastern Switzerland into Germany. Maybe we will have some international trains that got rerouted. We will see how big the collision is. The incident threatens to cause serious disruption at the height of evening peak. Trains are now blocked because of tens of thousands of Swiss sausages on the line. It's the start of evening rush hour at Zurich Hauptbahnhof, one of the busiest stations in the world. Up in the control room, they manage a tightly synchronized timetable of 3,000 daily arrivals and departures. But tonight, they're dealing with an unusual problem that's disrupting evening peak. A lorry carrying thousands of sausages has collided with a train at a level crossing, blocking the main line from Zurich to Munich. We have uh, one prognosis, it's like closed for uh, until nine o'clock. So it will be like one, two, three, four, five hours. That's quite long. Quite unusual, actually. <laughs> Don't have that every day. Customer supervisor Christoph Hunziker is down on the platform ready to reroute passengers. Christoph. But now there's news of a second incident out on track. Um, is so, die Kemptal, Moment, die in für eine... A person has fallen ill on a busy commuter train at Kemptal, 12 miles from Zurich. And the train is now at a standstill, adding strain and delays to an already busy service. All the trains now at this time are crowded, so maybe a bit of problem for the next train then. Too many, too many person in, the, in one train. <laughs> Christoph now has to deal with the fallout. So we just received the message that uh, there is a medical urgent to uh, stations away from here and we have to go down to say to people that the train will not come and uh, yeah, just to check the alternative connections, okay? We don't? As Christoph handles the Russia disruption on the concourse, Transport police officers Virginia Velkley and Heinz Schmidhauser have their own commotion to deal with. Security guards have alerted them to a man who has walked into the station and asked to be handed over to the authorities. What is the problem? Virginia must get to the bottom of the man's story. How do you get here to, to Europe? Maybe three, three months here in Switzerland. In Switzerland? Yeah. Where are you from? Morocco. The man appears to be desperate. Where in Switzerland? You have been the last three months? Street. Street? Street. Yeah. Mm. And then he makes an unusual request. I want to stay here, if it's a possibility. You want to stay here? Yeah. I'm trying to live and study in Morocco, but I couldn't. You know why? Because it's, uh, in Morocco it's, uh, it's hopeless. Life in Morocco is like a hell. The man is seeking asylum. But he has to answer some difficult questions first. Why you were here in Switzerland like three months and you didn't ask for asylum? I don't know. I don't. I don't know anything. I don't have anyone to help me to tell me why. Uh, because uh, I was af be afraid. So we have to check your fingerprints because if you have asked for asylum in, in another country, it's like difficult. Ja, teilweise habe ich schon Mitleid mit diesen Leuten, weil es wird hier irgendeinen Grund geben, wieso dass sie die Weiterreise auf sich nehmen und hierher zu uns kommen. Hey. 
<laughs> Up in control, Laura is now battling to reroute Germany-bound trains blocked by sausages on the line. Normally, he starts in Zurich. Normally goes like Zurich Airport, Winterthur, Wiel, Gosau, St. Gallen, St. Margrethe, and then to Munich. And now he's going to be diverted, like going around the lake to Zorgon. The people from the stations in between may take another train, but they're going to be late. That's going to add miles and hours to journeys, but Laura's hopeful that not all passengers will be as demanding as the Swiss. Hopefully there are a lot of Germans on the train, though. We'll say, like, oh, well, it's, it's like in Germany, but <laughs> those people are, are not used to that. Christoph, though, is in the firing line. The sausages have also blocked local services, and he needs to give daily commuters alternative routes home. But not all of them are willing to listen. I meet them great, they have to fall off. Oh, tschüss. OK, well. Christoph is uh, downstairs at the platform, so there'll be, uh, yeah. Uh, some unhappy person there right now. Yeah, I think it's the greatest show that I've ever seen. Okay, this is it. Good evening. No, winter do not. They fought. We are unglaubed. Sorry. Will 1839 on Gleis 33 34. At the police post, Virginia is processing a Moroccan man with no documentation who says he wants asylum. I, I don't have anyone. I'm trying to learn it in Morocco. I have new book, but I don't have anyone help. The man is taken away to be fingerprinted, checked against the database and questioned further. Only one in four Swiss asylum applications are successful. Yeah, I don't know his personal story, I don't know his situation, but I'm happy that I'm not the person who has to judge whether his asylum is taken or not. Hello, I'm Laura. I'm going to go to Zurich. Hello, I'm Laura. I'm going to go to Zurich. I'm going to go to Zurich. The commuter line from Kemptal is now open. But he has some sad news about the person who collapsed on the train. <laughs> the medical emergency, like the person there in Kemptal, unfortunately died at, on, the, on the platform there. So the help was too late, unfortunately. We don't have time for, for thinking about the person which died. Probably better so. <laughs> that we don't have enough time for, for thinking about that person. And down on platform nine, That's enough. Christoph has at last got welcome news for passengers for the Munich train delayed by the sausages on the line. Train is leaving. Yeah, right now. Perfect. Now we go for having a break. But there's no break for Transport Police Officer Virginia Velkley. She's now on duty with colleague Mirko Milanovic. And just as one issue has been dealt with, another one emerges. And it's another unusual case. We are going to Altstetten, and there is a big uh, fight. Two hundred thirty people on the Gleis field, a bigger group, and the element of the city police is on the scene. Wir gehen als Unterstützung rein. Wir müssen einsteigen. Altstädter Platz, ja. Okay. Okay, da können wir mal führen. Social Media Footage is coming in of a big brawl involving hundreds of youths at a local station just a couple of miles down the track. Einige Personen seien schon auf dem Gleisen gewesen, einige Züge fielen aus. Und jetzt schauen wir, was, was, vor Ort, was wir antreffen. Das Telefon an. Ja, das ist gut. Ich 
Kannst du dringlich abbrechen? Kannst du dringlich abbrechen? Ja. Ja. Transport police officers Virginia Velkley and Mirko Milanovic are responding to an emergency call at a local station two miles from Zurich Hauptbahnhof. There have been reports of a mass brawl involving hundreds of youths. At station control, they're monitoring the unfolding situation. We have many cancellations, many, yeah, many delays. Not good for the moment now. With police now at the scene, Virginia and Mirko are trying to disperse the crowds. Sind Sie also gut? Gehen Sie, gehen Sie auf die Vorderseite, nehmen Sie den Rücken an. Ja, dann gehen Sie auf Gleis. Können Sie vorne links rauf, gehen Sie rauf, ist kein Problem. Merci. The cause of the violence is becoming clearer. A spontaneous party organized over Snapchat that turned nasty. Momentan hat sich die Situation ist sich am Auflösen. Wir warten mal ab. Jetzt ist Abwarten, Tee trinken. Mal schauen, wie sich die Situation jetzt weiter äh, entwickelt. Just a few hundred meters from the bus stop, at the same local station, a team of railway engineers are hard at work. Hussein Kiddick and his crew are laying new ballast over a freshly dug underpass. Deswegen ist die ganze Aktion wegen der Führung hier. Da haben wir dann die Gleise ausgebaut. Hilfsbürger ist eingebaut worden. Wir tun jetzt dann gerade dann die Anschlüsse von der Hilfsbürger anstopfen. An important stretch of track has been out of service for the duration of the work and it's vital that it's reopened on time. Also die ganze Arbeit, also was wir hier machen, das wird dann äh, bis, das wird dauern bis Montag 5.30 Uhr. Äh, weil das ist wichtig wegen, äh, wegen der Bahnbetrieb, da kommen wieder, dann wird wieder mehr Züge gefahren ab Montag früh. A special tamper machine helps the ballast settle to support the tracks. Once this was backbreaking work using picks and shovels. But some things are still done the old-fashioned way. The tracks are levered to the correct height by hand. As the machine moves to each new section, Hussein checks the rails are level and to the precise standard gauge of four foot eight and a half inches. Weil wir kommen gut voran, ist du wieder anpassen, dann werde ich dann hier dann schweiden und neutralisieren, dann ist gut, dann gehen wir da vorbei. Across the tracks, Virginia and Mirko think they have now dealt with the mass brawl. We werden uns langsam aber sicher zurückziehen, ja. But suddenly it all kicks off again. And the scale of the incident has surprised even old police hands. Manche Menge Streitereien, aus was für Gründen auch immer, Hintergrund, ob das Beziehungsdramen sind oder Alkohol ist immer im Spiel. Ja, das kommt öfters vor. Aber dass eine Party gecancelt wird und dass wir auf einen Schlag so viele Leute am Bahnhof haben, das kommt schon selten davor. Ja, wir haben die Situation sehr deeskalierend auseinandergebracht, sprich, wie du siehst, vorne keine Personengruppen mehr zu sehen. Es hat sich verteilt, für uns erfüllt. Zürich ist die Partymeile. Ist so. Ja. <lacht> Und 
At Zurich Station, the dance floor is empty. Well, almost. It's early morning, and with passengers nearly all gone, Raimondo Maida can get to work with his high-tech helper. This is my favorite, my robot. Look, alone. He needs me, and I need him. I don't feel me alone, no, never. I am, I am very busy. I don't have time to be lonely. Where is the robot? Is he finished or not? Okay, oh, not so good. I think we have to wait a little bit. He plays. <laughs> I don't know what, what he wants, but he plays. Come on, boy. The robot is finished, but I have to keep him on the working. And I go. <laughs> it's a new day in Zurich, the biggest city in Switzerland. On Bahnhofstrasse, there's the normal hustle and bustle as travellers head to Zurich Hauptbahnhof, the country's busiest transport hub. But the station today is going to be even busier than usual. And noisier. Switzerland is, is rather calm. This is exceptional. With morning rush hour over, staff have to prepare for Zurich's busy evening peak. But a spontaneous demonstration by construction workers in the middle of the concourse threatens to derail the whole day. And it's customer supervisor Ralph Langenberger who's in the thick of it. Yeah, this is quite loud, yeah. But we are also used to the, to the, to the noise of the trains. So uh, we're quite used to it. It's a more orderly atmosphere three miles down the track at Zurich's train maintenance yard. Take care. Here too, everything has to work like clockwork for high quality work and then we need a clean place and so you can use the time for the work and not for clean up carriages are efficiently and swiftly brought in and out using a giant turntable the only one in the world to take one out or inside we need 15 minutes and so it means every half an hour we can put in a new coach for repair. They're checked over every 12,500 kilometers. That means once every 13 days. Today, Italian engineers Pasquale, Giovanni and Luigi are replacing all the wheels on a 50-ton double-decker carriage. First to vorbereite and then schieben. Borge oben drauf, montiert und drauf errichtet in Berlin Zone. Albita vier Stunden. Vier Stunden, drei Personen, vier Achsen. Wie Butter. And cutting edge Swiss technology also measures exactly how tightly to bolt the nuts. Now it is green, and now the yellow circle means that's the next nut he has to fix. The reconditioned wheels must now be attached to the carriage. That's several hours' work, and the Swiss railway clock is ticking. We have a little bit to speed up because we have another coach. He has to come on this place this afternoon. Reservations manager Hussein Maida is also up against the clock. For me, it's the stress. I see the time. My mind tells me. Man, go the next train. He also has some high-tech help. 
The train number is uh, correct. I put with this USB stick completely reservation in the board computer. Must a little bit wait. Well, it's my smart girl, come on. But the onboard computer is letting him down. Oh my God, the system completely down. Luckily, the old turn it off and on again technique does the trick. Ah, jetzt läuft es, super. Jetzt geht das System round. Right, this train is ready to go on time. On the concourse, the union speeches are over. And Ralph would like his station back. I'm not going to the track where they are supposed to leave. But not all the protesters are ready to leave, and a train delay isn't helping. Yeah, it should be track 17, the first train, which brings them home. But it hasn't arrived yet. Driver Melinda Fuchs is arriving on time, thanks to the marvel of Zurich's flexible track system. There are so many different tracks for so many different directions. And when you are the signaler, it gives you more possibilities to deal with problems. But timekeeping is not always this easy. Because I have to be so punctual all the time in my job. I'm very unpunctual in my private life. That is a fact, and I often have to run to catch my private trains. <laughs> Nächster Halt Zürich, Endbahnhof dieses Zuges. It's the end of the line. It's non-stop though underground in the station's thousand meter square kitchen. All of the food for the station and its food outlets is prepared here by a team of 140 chefs, led by Christopher Banz. Sausages, bakery, pastries, smoked salmon. Uh, we make pastrami here, we make bacon here. And even down here, every second counts. There's 400,000 people passing through the main station a day. So there's a lot of chance to get people in to eat. The guests don't want to wait. So that's a big problem. So the time, time is really important. It's crunch time, too, at the depot. The three Italian engineers are ready to bolt the new wheels onto the train carriage. Whoop. One gets out, next comes in. We have always enough to do. Zurich's high-tech train depot and carefully timetabled workload has ensured that this train will be back in service on time. It's almost like space age. Something like you would see in NASA. Of course, we are in Switzerland. <laughs> Back at Zurich Hauptbahnhof, the demo is all but over. And Ralph can finally pour the protesters on their specially chartered train. Attention, départ de train. Hi. Now it's getting calm again. <laughs> Hello. Absteigen, absteigen. Not for long, though. If the uh, bicycle driver uh, come very quick and they couldn't brake, we, we have accident here on the platform and we doesn't need that on the rush hour. Customer supervisor Jacek Dobrovsky has to get the station ready for afternoon peak. Also there with the skateboard. We have a lot of people with skateboards, with bicycles, and then with broken bones. Yes, not, not, not really good. It's now 4 p.m. 
and Zurich's busiest period, the evening rush hour, is about to start. OK, alles klar, das wird fertig. But news is coming into control of a serious incident that could yet again jeopardize the tightly controlled timetable. Um, 2031 is probably the whole outfall of Zurich Flugzeug. It's only the Zusatzzug. A person has been hit by a train near Alton, a busy rail junction. And on the platforms, Erwin Brun is going to have to deal with the rush hour fallout. If it happens on the busy line between Zurich and Alton, then more or less half of the network is blocked. It's a very difficult situation to handle. It's nearly 5 p.m. at Zurich Hauptbahnhof, one of the busiest stations in the world. And an incident 20 miles along the main line near Luzerne is threatening the evening rush hour. It's now 16.56 and um, we have an interruption between Zurich and Luzerne at the moment because uh, of an accident involving a person. On the platforms, customer supervisor Erwin Brun is sadly well aware of what an accident on the track usually means. There was a suicidal accident. The first half hour, it's usually the most stressful for everybody. I'm always very honest and explain it that it's a suicidal accident, and then customers understand it and they always feel sorry for the driver. The main line between Lucerne and Zurich is now blocked. No trains can get through until the track is cleared. And now it's five o'clock, so it's uh, quite busy. The whole network in Switzerland, it's one of the main lines. Every half an hour there is a train, a double-decker train, and it's, uh, yeah, it's always crowded, even in, especially in, uh, in rush hour. And on the platforms, there's now another problem for Irwin. One of the 13 daily German trains from Hamburg has broken down and will be arriving with a delay. It's arriving five minutes late and we'll leave with a delay of three minutes in Zurich. These trains coming from Germany very often are heavily late. For the Swiss people, it's already three minutes a problem. <laughs> because three minutes delay, that's outrageous. So much for German efficiency. <laughs> no comment. The broken down German train has had to be swapped out and replaced by a veteran of the Swiss railway. Here he comes. Oh, I think the substitute train is from the 60s. Took quite a vintage one. But you can open the windows. <laughs> These other trains I used to go on the school trip for the school excursions. The toilet system is rudimental. So there's just a hole that goes on the track. And there's no time to waste. The train's late arrival means the passengers will have a very tight connection time. You know, the official connecting time for a train here in Zurich is seven minutes, and that is not a lot. And when you are five minutes late... It's 6.30, and the antique Swiss train finally leaves on its onward journey. There's also good news about the service to Lucerne, which has been disrupted for two hours because of the fatality on the line. Services are running again, and Irwin heads to platform eight to dispatch the first direct train for two hours. But now there's another issue. This train has a technical problem, so we go towards the front to the driver's cabin. One train has a problem now in Zurich, another train going to Lucerne. Sometimes it's all at one line, sometimes it's nothing the whole day. It's a bit, uh, a bit strange line today. Because of the earlier incident, the platforms are now packed with commuters all wanting to get home. I'd like to have Calcutta now, huh? 
And when Irwin finally battles through the crowds to the driver's cab at the front of the Lucerne train, there's yet more bad news. That has to do with the balance of the train. <laughs> well, it's probably it's going to be cancelled. Outside the station, transport police officers Virginia Velkley and Heinz Schmidhauser are dealing with another mysterious individual who's just turned up at the station. Is this all that I have? I have no coat for anything. No. Are you now from the house away? No, from the psychiatry. From the psychiatry. Ah, OK. Do you know that they are here? No, no. A man has checked himself out of his psychiatric care facility in Germany and made his way to Zurich by train. Wissen die, dass sie weggegangen sind? Nee, dann soll ich nicht mehr leben. Ja, so schlimm. Ja, ja so oh schlimm. Je. Warum sind sie denn dort weggelaufen? Werden sie gesucht? Die wollen mich da, die wollen mich da krank machen. Krank machen mit Tabletten und so. Ja. Okay. Heinz does what he can to engage with the man. Okay. Das war nicht so gut. Ja, die sind auch gut, die tut man so auslutschen. Mit ja, ja, mit süßen Senf, ja. Mit süßen Senf, ja. Wir schauen, ob ihr das... Gute Brezel, ja. But the man is vulnerable, and there's nothing Virginia and Heinz can do for him in Switzerland. They'll take him to the border and hand him to their German counterparts. And on the platforms, there is now nothing Irwin can do for the delayed Lucerne service. Busfall, yeah. oh gosh. Cancelled. Oh. Mario, also beim Lokführer sagt Schlingendämpfer und das Personal sagt mir jetzt gerade der Wagen, wie er sich tot und jetzt ist er unentschieden der Ausfall. Okay, also ich ja, habe die Deadline einfach drin bisher 1855. Deadline für Räumung. Du sagst Ausfall. Also, der Job. The train which has a problem. The 1835 train to Lucerne. We need to take all the passengers out of the train and they need to take the train half an hour later. So that would be crowded. And news of the cancellation on a day with an already heavily disrupted timetable will not go down well. Ich habe 19.00 für den nächsten das nach Lucerne. Ich, ja. ich kann jetzt nicht noch eine halbe Stunde warten, bis das dazu. Das ist eine halbe Stunde. Nein, es geht einfach nicht. Ja, ich habe keinen Namen für so. Zahlen Sie mir ein Taxi. Da müssen Sie am Schalter vormachen. Ich kann kein Taxi autorisieren. Ja, das ist ja. nicht gut. Tut mir leid. Danke. Schönen Abend. Danke ebenfalls. And trains that are leaving are packed. Ich habe erst Klasse, aber ich, kann, ich, ich habe nicht mal einen Sitzplatz, nichts mehr bekommen. Hier ist alles überfallen. Na, also wollten Sie dann nicht mehr fahren? Ich, ich, ich wollte ja. fahren. Nein, 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 nein. Wissen Sie was? Nur Sie, ich habe extra geschaut. Ah, nein, Sie haben nicht okay. geschaut hier vorne. Bitte. Don't quarrel with the clients. You can only lose. For the second day running, it's been a severely disrupted rush hour. But the Lucerne trains are finally back on track, and Zurich Hauptbahnhof and its 3,000 daily trains are running to Swiss time once again. So now out in the train station of Zurich, it's, uh, it's really calm again. But this is the railway, and even in punctual and organized Switzerland, anything can happen. Maybe that, uh, yeah, in a few minutes, we are in a hurry again. 